Hello and welcome back to Beckler Guitars and Repair. Today we're checking out the Boss Katana Go. I've been trying to get my hands on one of these for a while. All my local music stores have been sold out. So let's have a look. Alright, I figure we'll do a full unboxing since I got this brand new and it hasn't been opened yet. And I don't know everything about this, so we'll kind of learn as we go. I kind of know ex some of what it does. Um, so this is the Boss Guitar to Go. It's a personal headphone guitar amplifier. Basically, this is like all the technology in the Katana amps uh, condensed into a pocket uh, personal amplifier. So you plug this into your guitar. It's got all the different effects of the Katana Go inside. Uh, and then you can use headphones or even wireless headphones because it's Bluetooth um, to listen to your guitar effects. So this is a great like couch option, but it does have some pretty other cool stuff. Um, basically, you can use it as an audio interface. So you can plug it into something via USB and record with it. It's got a five hour uh, playtime, uh, rechargeable. It's got this cool thing of like 3D audio where it actually sounds like you're on stage with you can hear like the amp uh, 360 around you you can kind of choose that it comes with an app all the different built-in katana effects and uh, I just want to see what we can do with this thing so let's go ahead and open it up there we go all right so it comes with a quick start guide here, so select stage feel, so that's got to be um, where your amp is in your headphones, Bluetooth, it's got a charging indicator, master volume, selects channel, banks, tuner, and then display. Cool, so it's got a guitar or a bass mode as well. And then this is a link to the app that you use along with it. So this is the packaging, comes in like a foam package, comes with a USB-C to USB cable, and here's the unit itself. Underneath the, fam, or the foam padding is uh, the full user's manual, and yeah, that's pretty much it. I'm hoping this is going to be easy to figure out. Uh, sometimes the Roland stuff, especially like their old effects processors, um, like the multi effects uh, processors or the big stomp pedals, they can be a little difficult to figure out. Uh, however, that's been changing currently. A lot of their uh, products seem to be a lot more user friendly, easy to figure out. Uh, so, yeah, okay, let's go ahead and just turn it on quickly. So, each of these is a channel. So, you get ABC. And then there's a little uh, kind of uh, a spring joystick or selector thing. So you can go up or down and it's, it clicks back to the middle. So you can cycle through these uh, different effects you can get. And there's a whole bunch. So this is the C bank. Let's just go through this quick. So clean, fat, clean, ambient, clean, retro phase, neo, clean, UK, clean, slap back, echo, chill, acoustic. So there's 10 of those. And then, let's see how many Bs there are. Again, a whole bunch of different effects. 10 Bs and 10 Cs. So you got 30 different effects you can cycle through uh, just right on the, on the unit itself. And then, I'm just trying to see. Oh yes, there's our USB port there. It's also got a headphone jack and you've got Bluetooth. So you can Bluetooth to wireless headphones. I'm not sure what the leg is going to be. I'm going to try that today. Uh, or you can plug wired headphones in, and then you can use this as a USB interface for recording with the USB port. And it feels pretty good. It feels plasticky, um, but uh, it's fairly robust. I feel like if you stepped on it, there might be an issue. But small drops and stuff like that shouldn't be anything to worry about. And yeah, all of the stuff feels good. Nice.
tactile responses and all the buttons and it's kind of in a matte uh, black finish as well so yeah feels nice all right I downloaded the app and I'm currently pairing so it's just the boss katana go app and I've got it in pairing mode and I'm just seeing how easy it, it is to pair and connect and pair okay so very simple and easy to connect it's already ready to go and here's the app it's called uh, BTS for Katana Go uh, what's weird about that is I couldn't find any um, links to this app looks like there's there's a QR code for like product info a QR code for the user's manual a QR code for the Roland website uh, but nothing for this particular app so you kind of got to find it on your own I just typed Katana Go into the App Store and it found it I'm sure it's the same for iOS having a look at the user's manual so we don't miss anything I really can't stand manuals like this I wish they came in a little book I hate these poster ones they're so annoying it turns out this is just like safety warnings and product safety stuff um, it's not actually the user's manual. The user's manual you actually have to download or look at it on a phone, which again, kind of annoying. I do prefer the book usually. And yeah, you actually have to go to the website, download the user's manual before you get it. And uh, I don't really have a problem with this. The only problem I have with this is like typically, you know, some people that don't have phones or computers or just, you know, someone who wants something easy but still wants to know um, what to do with it. Uh, this is not very convenient for them. Uh, there were some people that had problems with the Spark stuff that you had to do a, an upload or a, an update on it right away and some people didn't have phones or computers to do that. So this is kind of the same thing. Uh, I just wish it kind of came with a manual. Alright, a couple things I learned while reading the manual. You can actually connect this to the BOSS FS1 or the BOSS EV1, both uh, a wireless um, channel switcher and wireless expression panel which is really cool another cool thing I found while using the manual that I didn't know is uh, while you're using this you can actually use Bluetooth to put music through your device so let's say you're listening to headphones and you're hearing the effects on the guitar you can also Bluetooth in music from your like mobile phone so you can use this for like backing tracks to play along with or jam along to music whatever you want so that's a pretty cool feature okay this is really cool in the um effects editor app you can actually change each one of these different effects so for each one of these 30 different effects you can go in and customize it and then save it to your amp and it's uh, it'll be hard saved to that after that and yeah each effect or each patch lets you change the gain the volume the amp type uh, you can hit variation I'm not sure what that does I'm sure it's different on each one and then you have an equalizer for each one so you can actually adjust the bass middle treble presence so you can really dial in those tones and again you could do this for each one of the 30 different effects so a quick recap of the app you can adjust and uh, edit each one of the different patches uh, you've got your sessions this you can actually upload files to and jam along with uh, this is all the different live sets you've downloaded so you can manage all your downloads there the tone exchange has all the different effects you can download from the boss website and on june 24th there's going to be a user based one where you can download uh different patches that the users upload to the cloud and then you've got all your different settings where you can adjust um, your chain uh, your eq settings uh, the stage feel all that kind of stuff so yeah very very cool app and it seems to work really well all right so the first thing i tried to do was pair it to my Bluetooth headphones but it doesn't seem to be working as far as I can tell this is not possible with this thing um, I couldn't find anything on the internet about it I think it's just Bluetooth in rather than you know transmitting um, so I think you do need wired headphones for this the reason probably being also that uh, there would be a lot of latency I believe um, so yeah no Bluetooth headphones with this thing however if you do want to be a little ridiculous you could add a dongle to the headphone output and that would connect it to Bluetooth headphones so 
this uh, receiver and transmitter have APTX low latency technology so technically that's supposed to be really good uh, in terms of uh, diminishing latency but we're going to test that uh, in the right away here. All right, so I got the dongle uh, on here, the transmitter. So I just want to check the latency to the headphones. And actually, it's really, really good. Um, it's not noticeable at all. You can play pretty much in real time. And I'm sure there is latency, but it's not really, you can't really notice it. So I'm just going to plug my mic into my headphones so you can really hear what's going on here. <laughs> Actually very usable if you're using a Bluetooth transmitter with uh, and receiver with ABTX low latency. Uh, yeah, surprised by that, but it works really well. All right, and here it is, uh, the same thing, but using a wired connection to headphones. So you can hear the, the different latency here. There definitely is a difference. Uh, it's definitely a little bit more tighter on the wired, but the wireless is very usable. Not a lot of latency. Uh, one other thing I found in the app is uh, within the editing for each patch, it's also got an effects thing. So you can actually turn on a whole bunch of different effects. You can edit the effects to change it to different effects. Um, you can uh, fine tune everything. There's parameters for everything uh, as well as uh, different, you can turn on a wall, you can turn on more distortion. So each uh, bank, so you have 30 of them, are totally customizable um, with a ton of different crazy amount of options you could do. So you can really dial in 30 of your favorite guitar sounds that you spent a lot of time uh, editing on the app. Another cool thing is uh, with other Katana amps, you can actually upload your patches to the amp as well and vice versa. The amp can go into your app and then that can go into your Katana Go. So it's kind of a whole ecosystem that Roland, Roland has built. Okay, next let's just go quickly through what the stock effects are on this thing and we can hear how they sound. I'm not gonna go through everything, I'm just gonna go scroll through them pretty quickly so just so you can get an idea of the quality of the patches. <laughs> Thank you. 
All right, so yeah, there was a quick demo of all the different patches that come stock on the unit. They're all customizable, of course. Um, but yeah, very impressed with the uh, the quality of the sounds. Sounds great with my uh, SG with humbuckers. I'm sure single coils will do just as well. Uh, there's a couple things I want to try now. Um, so I want to try plugging this into an amplifier with uh, one eighth to quarter inch cable to see if you can run it through like a tube amp. And yeah, see how it sounds like through a, a tube amp. So you could use this effectively like a, a built-in pedal and run it through your amp and then just have all your different presets for all your songs built right in. So you could use it as kind of like a, a built-in pedal board. All right, so I'm plugged in my 65 uh, Bassman. And I'm going to demo this just the same way I demo any other pedal or guitar. So I'm using an SM57 mic'd up to a 212 cab. And I'm using a condenser mic for the room. And uh, yeah, so I'm attaching it just right into the amp using um, an eighth to quarter inch cable out of the headphones. And uh, yeah, let's just see how it works through a tube amp. <laughs> Yeah, I just want to do a quick demo through my tube amp, but wow, it really did sound great. Um, usually, sometimes when you put uh, digital effects through like a tube amp, it doesn't sound good. It just doesn't translate, but all the different effects really sounded good coming through there. Um, so yeah, that was pretty impressive. So essentially what you could do is you could edit up to 30 different patches on this thing and then uh, essentially have like a little pedal board that has 30 different pedals that you could bring to a gig and plug into your tube amp and play for the crowd. So there's a whole bunch of really cool applications for this little thing. So you can use it for couch playing, um, recording, uh, even gigging, and you can save all the patches right on here and it's rechargeable for five hours. So very impressive so far. I want to go ahead and try the uh, recording part. So I'm just checking out the recording side of things, and uh, so yeah, I'm just plugged in with a USB cable, a USB-C from the Katata Go into my tablet here. This is an Android tablet, and then, uh, so yeah, it's actually working quite well. I had no problem uh, setting it up, it just automatically recognized it, and it's good to go for recording. All right, I've got it plugged into Ableton Live. And uh, yeah, it's got good latency and all everything seems to be working as it should. So yeah, and it's just plugged right into my computer. Very simple. All right, we put this thing through the ringer today. So what are my final thoughts on the Boss Katana Go? I really love it. I think it's a great piece of tech for the price. There's a ton of different uses for it. It's great as a headphone amplifier with, you know, 30 different effect slots that you can totally customize to your liking and then save it to the device so you can use it portably anywhere without the app. Um, it sounded really great plugged into a tube amp, and that's something I had an issue with with the uh, positive grid spark amps. Plugged into a tube amp, they just they sound a lot different. They don't really work. This thing sounded great through a tube amp. I think the overall quality of the sounds and effects on this thing 
are a little bit better and more refined than that on the Spark Positive Grid stuff. Again, that might be just be personal preference, but everything on this sounded really, really good and it was all highly customizable. Uh, I really like that you can uh, kind of cross-platform this with a Katana amp. So anything that you save on this, you can put on the amp and vice versa. That's really cool. Um, I really like how you can play guitar and listen to Bluetooth music from your device at the same time. That's really good for practicing and playing along to backing tracks, that kind of a thing. The built-in tuner is cool. I didn't show that, but it's just a basic built-in tuner, but it works really well. Uh, I really like the battery life on this. Five hours is great. And then using it as a recording interface is super convenient as well. Just having that all wrapped up into this little package is great. What I really like about this too is that you can use this for uh, mobile recording. So you can plug this right into your phone or your tablet. A lot of times those kind of interfaces require a power supply. So that really hinders the, you know, the mobile aspect of it. But this thing you can actually plug right in and it's tiny and you can record on the go, which is really cool, a really cool feature as well. The only thing I kind of didn't like about it is it just feels a little plasticky. It'd be nice if it was a little bit more like, I don't know, a metal chassis or something like that, something that you wouldn't worry about breaking over time. Uh, this seems like it's a little bit flimsy, although it does feel pretty good. Uh, like a metal chassis would have been really cool. I also don't like that uh, you need to download the user's manual uh, on a phone or a, or a computer. Some people will just want to use this as is without using the phone or the app and then having to download the manual just to understand how it works is kind of annoying. And it would be cool if it was a Bluetooth transmitter and receiver so that you could use uh, Bluetooth headphones with it. Uh, I'm sure there's a reason for it, probably the, the latency, but we did use a, a dongle with it uh, for Bluetooth headphones and that worked really well with very, very little latency. So I'm probably going to be use it, use it like that. For me, uh, I just like the less wires, the better. However, as a headphone amp, it's pretty easy just to plug it into here, put it behind your guitar, put your headphones on and go. So yeah, very, very cool little amp. It seems like Boss is making a whole ecosystem with the Gitana stuff so they can kind of talk to each other and cross-platform stuff. So it's going to be exciting to see what else they come up with. But um, for the money, this thing is a no-brainer. It's great. You got all the great Boss effects. Uh, it's great for practicing. It's great for recording. And you can even use it as like a portable pedal board that you can plug into an amplifier. So very, very cool. And uh, I just, yeah, I highly recommend this thing. And again, this video is not sponsored. I'm not receiving compensation in any way, shape, or form. Uh, I just saw this and uh, I really like the Katana stuff and I was very interested in it. Thanks for tuning in to Beckler Guitars and Repair and I'll have more for you really soon. Thanks a lot.